Maybe it's because I was born after this fight took place, and I think I've probably yeah, grown up. <laughs> I've grown up though with the hype of the, you know the modern fight game, and and you know I knew something about it, Steve, but didn't realise quite how genuine uh, this grudge was between these two. Because we kind of assume that you know fighters go off and they don't really care afterwards. You can see the body language and the stories. That Thirty-seven kind of years on, and he's talking about the reasons why he lost the fight for the first time, by the way. But if I can take you back to that March night. I think it was a Tuesday. Wembley sold out. They could have sold 30,000 back then, in my opinion. Nowadays, they'd sell 100,000. This was back page for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. It absolutely dominated. It's hard for us to understand. Joe Bugner was 21 years of age, and he was having his 35th fight. And, and him, what's his face? Henry Cooper, guess what? He was only, this is staggering, he was only nine months older than Joe Kawasaki, and only about seven pounds heavier. This fight grabbed the nation and divided the nation. And by the way, Harry Carpenter's wrong. There was one man in that arena that night that did think that Joe Bugner won. I checked this afternoon with my dad. He was there, and he said definitely Joe Bugner won. Well, it's interesting because obviously this is a referee's decision and you look back and, and you think, I wonder how it would be scored these days. It, it, obviously, a lot of people are, you know, they're still split now. So therefore, you know, it, it is one of those tight decisions and yet neither of them could let it go, could no, they? And well, it seems to ruin Joe Buggins' life. That? When you watch that film, it's fantastic. These days, when there's a major title fight, it's, it's a good chance that most fighters, when they get in the ring, are millionaires anyway. It's what was lost. At the very end there, when Bugner gets the decision, look at Henry Cooper's face. He's lost his legacy. He knows he it's over. He cannot retire as an unbeaten fighter. Look at Bugner, which is even more tragic. He's the winner, but he's lost everything. He loses an entire nation. Um, the country yeah. turns against entire him. Entire nation, that's a good point, because you said he was the split the nation. I think they're fairly unanimous. I think the booing, you can sense the animosity. I thought Henry was going to stick one on him when Bugner turned up. When he went for the hug, he just leant mm. back, and I thought... But Bugner, don't forget, Bugner loved playing the panto villain. I know we're a little nostalgia's kind. A little nostalgia's kind, and you want to rewrite history now. But he played up for that. And all well, the morons that he's talking about in the press, he earned plenty mm. of money out of newspaper columns, pictures. Well, in all fairness, that all came a lot later. At that time, he was 21. He'd left Hungary, remember, when the Soviet tanks arrived. Okay, so when he talks about going to Australia, and but he's at, talking and about his career stage, now. I'm not talking specifically about that night. Obviously, he was treated badly that night. But let's not mm. pretend Bugner was some victim throughout his career. He'd love to. He was that. a victim at that stage, and immediately after that, he'd already had some fantastic 10-round fights. That year, for instance, he had 85 rounds, three championship fights. That's unheard of. And he and he, he fought some brilliant Americans, and you saw that clip of him going 15 rounds with. Muhammad Ali, okay, and Ali acknowledges that he was one of his three toughest and most awkward fights. But he had fights. plenty of chances to rehabilitate himself with the, with the British public. But and because of his fighting style, they never and took to him. The reason he's here now, uh, of course, as well as to, to, you know, to make amends and to let you uh, uh, listen to their story, is he's, he's having a dinner and they're trying to raise some it, money for him because he is bankrupt. It, he's bankrupt because he's made a couple of bad investments. The dinner's going to be in London at the Millennium Hotel. That's going to be fantastic. He's actually auctioning off the shorts he wore in the Kuala Lumpur fight. And, and there, is, there is a couple of fights that we all tend to gloss over when we look back on Bugner's career. And one of them took place not two miles from here, a 12-round war with Joe Frazier, where he climbed up off the floor. And for that fight alone, for that fight alone, he should be honoured and respected. Well, it was, it was fantastic to see him there in the same room. Let's have a quick look.